All right, so we are recording and we are about to go live. We start the line. Okay. <laughs> All right, and we are now live on Facebook. Um, all right. Hi, Facebook. Uh, thanks for watching Hudgens Talks. Uh, my name is Kate Driscoll. I'm the Public Programs Manager for the Hudgens Center for Art and Learning. And today I get to talk to Tony Frost. Welcome, Tony. Hello. Thank you. So for people who don't know you, will you just sort of introduce yourself and tell people who you are, what you do? Okay. My name is Tony Ross. Uh, people may know me by my uh, web pen name Tony Teach. I am an artist and a trainer, and I consider myself more of a hack. I dabble in a lot of different things. I teach not only video, but working with audio, animation, and um, pretty much almost anything that Adobe offers. I also do a lot of trainings for uh, a company called Toon Boom, which they do, they create animation software. It's the same software that's used for The Simpsons, uh, Bob's Burgers, almost anything that Disney has on TV. And outside of that, I also teach things like uh, creating interactive books. And I work with several companies, uh, Toon Boom being one of them, another one called Pub Coder. But my specialty is uh, bringing up the, uh, kind of hard or software that has a steep learning curve, but I present it in a way that's easy enough for people to follow. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to take one of your classes. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know, Tony is uh, now teaching classes at the Hudgens Center for Art and Learning. And um, you can find all that information on our website, or if, if you're not uh, a big computer person yet, then you can just you know, give give our education department a call. We'll get you set up. Um, so, Tony, how did you get started, started doing all this? Were you always a big computer person, or how this happened? Um, honestly, no. I, was, I think I was. I've always been into art, and the I started college very late. I had already gone to the military. I, I don't think I started college until my late twenties. And I, it actually was a conversation with my with my father. I was talking about going to heading off to college, and he says, "Well, if you if you definitely are set on going, at least learn computers." And I was like, "Okay." So that's how I kind of went there. And in college, I pretty much my my major was initially illustration, and then I ended up shifting to computer art. And I think this was right right when I was graduating. It was right when things started becoming things like. Uh, majors like multimedia or web design were just coming out, and I just kept growing from there. So, what was it about the computers? Was it just your dad's advice, or was it also like just that form of art really spoke to you? I would say it was probably my dad's advice because honestly, I got I was dragged into the computers, kicking and screaming. I was kind of like. Uh, 
especially the, we're talking i learned photoshop when it didn't have layers so it was like way way early on and i remember being in class and wanting to do things by hand and saying that the professors only are only paying attention to the things that are done done by the computer and it's like you got to show us the old way and so um but it was kind of one of those weird things once i did start to learn um it became a lot easier to do things and particularly how did I end up really getting into teaching was because a lot of the software was brand new. A lot of the professors, I won't say a lot of them, I will say the ones that I remember, unfortunately, <laughs> weren't very good at teaching it. So I ended up being a student and kind of also helping other students at the same time going, oh, do this. This is how you would do this. So. Oh, so you were the person who would have just saved me in this class. <laughs> Pretty much. It's like, it's like, yeah, that's, it's, there's, there, I remember a couple of classes. I, I remember right when I graduated, I was like, I want to teach in the department. And we had just gotten a new department head. Mm -hmm. And they said that they were worried about, uh, with with a student with someone who had just graduated, what if I had to te end up teaching one of my classmates? And people were like, "He's already been doing that." So it's like, oh well, yeah, no problem. <laughs> so were you into computers as all at all as a kid? Uh, well, that's a weird thing to. <laughs> as a kid, we'll say no, not necessarily because. Good grief! I what is it? What did I just turn? I think I just turned fifty-two. So, oh. so I, I, I may appear a little younger than what I am. So, so no, you definitely do. So yeah, no. Uh, when people say when video games were around when I was little, it, we're talking Pong. Yeah. Um, so it's like when what is it a Commodore sixty four and all the stuff and things like that. So, yeah. Uh, I think when I grad, even when I graduated college, even though it was starting late, my my flop my um my portfolio fit on a floppy disk. So nice. Um, so can you tell people a little bit about what are the things that, like, what's sort of your field of expertise? What is it that you look at and you go, oh yeah, I, I can teach that or I can do that, no problem? I would honestly say, I think my, my, uh, my top favorites are animation and kind of visual effects. Um, mainly I love, I've always had a love for animation and the idea of quote unquote bringing something to life and visual effects kind of playing with things like uh like programs like after effects or something like that mm -hmm. where you can go in and just create something that wasn't necessarily there or or alter it um and i'm trying to do this without i don't think i can do it without uh with, give me one quick second can i share my screen really quick oh yeah yeah for sure that. I'm going to, I'm going to jump over to, um, I'll just do desktop real quick. Um, the reason is I'm going to show this one, one particular thing. Um, this is the program After Effects. So this is one of the courses that I teach and I'm going to pull this up. Um, I'm just going to, I don't need to just going to move my timeline here a little bit if it'll work um but the idea of can you see my screen okay oh yeah okay so a couple of things one uh this particular video this is the way it looks normally and um let's see if i can okay cool so having this particular person walk across is one thing. That's the way the video looks normally. But what we're doing in class is uh, having it that make it look like they're walking in front of these words. Okay. So that's one thing. The other thing is that rain doesn't actually videotape or film well at all. So when you look at the actual video, you can see puddles moving, but you don't see rain. Mm -hmm. So we come in and add rain on top of that. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. Um, but making like all these little rain that's added, that's all added digitally. Oh. 
Uh, and then on top of it, we can just go in and go, oh, let's, let's add a nice little color tint to this. And it's just really pushing that idea. Or if you've ever seen things like uh, the word love being written out, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well, how is that done? And this is kind of playing around with motion graphics and visual effects. Uh, this little shot is probably one of my favorites. I had a student um, that wanted to have video that they said, well, how would you do video that interacts with something else? And so we did this little thing where as she touches the bulb, it actually turns on, even though it's vector. And if you look up here, mm -hmm. um, I even have the light that's actually casting light onto her. Yeah. So little things like that um, and just kind of problem solving. And the beautiful thing about when working or training classes like that, you will have someone ask a question of like, how would you do this? And you go, huh, how would you do that? And so, so you just dive into it and start figuring things out. So that's, that's kind of one of my, one of my favorite things to do is that the art of, um, the art of illusion, it's always been a thing of my, it's one of my favorite things to do with like, if you, if you've done it correctly, no one actually realizes what you've done. Mm -hmm. so. And you know, just, so this is something someone could learn just in your class. Yes. This is actually one of the, this is uh, the light bulb lady is one of the assignments in my, in my after effects class. And the beauty of it is you end up learning my thing is, I think a lot of books are great if you have a full semester, but one of the things I do in my, in my day job, as it were, is I usually have three days to teach people how to master the software. So there's this massive book that's like classroom in a book. I'm like, great. We don't have 16 weeks. We have three days. So what I will end up doing, uh, this assignment in particular, it involves, oh, you're going to learn how to not only... Uh, rotate different items. You're going to learn how to bring in files from Illustrator. You learn how to split layers. How do you rotate layers? How do you copy information from one thing to another and then offset your timing? And it's all of this in one particular lesson. So it's killing, or not to sound violent, but killing a flock of birds with one stone pretty much. <laughs> You know, and just, just seeing this, which, you know, it's the kind of stuff that you might see in like a commercial or a movie or like yes. a short or something, and you just don't give it a second thought. But then no. I'm seeing you do this uh, and just watching you do it. It's like I go from not noticing it to thinking, oh, I could never do that. It's magic, <laughs> magic on the computer. Well, yeah, it's, it's that whole thing of, uh, I always tell people there's, there are a couple of things that you don't think about. Um, there are plenty of movies where people go like, oh my gosh, did you see the, did you see the visual effects for this particular creature? And it's like, you're paying attention to that, but what you didn't notice was, oh, the very old guy that was in that movie. Yeah, he's about 27. <laughs> it's like, but you didn't pay attention because it was done flawlessly. If we've, we've all seen, well, I would like to say we've all seen, You've seen, I guess you've seen a movie where you're thinking like, oh, wow, that looks really off for some reason. Now, me, because I do know this stuff, was like, I'll go, okay, the green screen is off, but it'll feel just not real for some reason. Um, and sometimes it's like you'll watch a period piece and it looks like they've rented all the costumes and they're afraid to get them dirty. So they look like they just walked out of someone's closet. And it's like, right. this doesn't look right. Uh, but the idea is if you can actually lose yourself into something that's the beauty of it and mm -hmm. if it's off or if something's too fast or it's too slow mm -hmm. and it's it kind of gives you that uneasy feeling even if you don't understand why um so my job is to make sure make to make it look easy um which is a, a good thing and a bad thing at the same time <laughs> mm -hmm. are there any like you know movies or anything you can think of that really stand out to you it's like oh this particular thing is really well done, or the opposite. Uh, <laughs> actually, both of them have to do with. One of them is a, a very, very, very old movie, and I, I use this example when I teach a lot. Uh, there's a the movie called The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And it is um, the whole thing that everyone was going off about. It won this acad- these Academy Awards for the makeup for the little girl. And everyone was like, yes, but the priest is a very young actor. And he's still alive, to the best of my knowledge. But he doesn't even look that old now. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's like, so it's the the old priest that's in there. It's, it's an, he's not an old guy. It's He's a very young actor playing that. Um, the other thing is more of a contemporary. Um, it was one of... Oh my gosh, uh, Hugh Jackman was in this, and I remember seeing this in the theater, and I remember being very angry. But I watched; uh, it was called Van Helsing, mm-hmm. and in the some of the effects were so bad. I, I was sitting there going, "What intern did they give the scene to?" And it was like, and it was like, you can, I hate being able to look at something and tell where where they cut corners, and it was just like, "Oh my gosh, this is terrible." And so. Um, I think it's that the whole thing if you if you can pull off the illusion where you don't have to have people think about it, that's pretty cool. Right. When you when you're just totally suspend you totally suspend your disbelief. You're just yes. totally in it and something doesn't just kind of stick out and you go, wait, like one two movies I hear compared a lot with with that is I hear um people compare uh I hear people like talk about the Lord of the Rings movies and how things were so done so well and you can watch them now. Yes. Still hold up really, really well. Yeah, the funny thing about Lord of the Rings, uh, the oh. dwarf, Gimli, yeah. the, is the tallest actor out of everyone there. So anytime you see them together, that is an effect shot. But you don't think about it because it's just put together well. It is, and even times, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, even times where I... You know, I'll watch the extended editions, you know, a lot. I'll even try and think, I wonder if I can catch it this time when I'm watching or <laughs> when they're like in shot with the hobbits, you know, when they're they're going through like people's legs or something. Uh, I I end up losing track of like trying to catch it because it's, it's just so well done that it doesn't register. <laughs> so, oh, you go ahead. Oh, no, you can talk. I was just going to ask, what do you think it is about computers and animation that gives people such that such a sort of like they freeze up and they say oh no i can't do it okay uh i I can answer that pretty easily one i just shifted from after effects i jumped over to the program tim boom harmony and what i can tell you is when people see anything brand new Mm -hmm. um and the funny if if we can blame computers but it's even food if you go to like if you've never had sushi before and someone and someone goes, well, it's fish. Well, is it cooked? Well, no. <laughs> it's like, so it's something brand new. Um, on top of that, if you're used to working, let's say, with Microsoft Word, and all of a sudden I open up this program and go, hey, we're going to animate. And you're going, how many buttons? What is that button thing? What's that for? What's that for? What's that for? And it is overwhelming. So that's, I think, what, what happens. And... One of the techniques that I uh, that I use and I pu- and I really push for is any class that I'm teaching. I normally get my students, let's say, for an animation class. I will take roll, and it'll be like maybe five or ten minutes after, and I'll say, "Okay, by 35 after, we're going to have our first animation done." And it's the whole thing of like, yeah, I can tell you about all the tools and what this does, but. Yeah, just let's just worry about the little brush tool right now. We're going to do this. And it's the whole idea of creating a sense of wow. So if I can knock them over with that in those first few minutes, you're just like, I, I, I made this work. This is cool. And all of a sudden, the software isn't as intimidating because I didn't go, OK, we're going to go to our preferences. All right. Now, if you'll go with me to here and we're going to go file open, this is a brand new document here. No, we don't use rulers. And it's like, ah, forget all that. Let's animate some dots real quick. <laughs> so let's, let's have these dots going across the screen. Okay, that's cool. Okay, the dot needs a friend. Let's add a new layer. Cool. Just click here. Great. And so just kind of get people into that. And it's honestly the, the a technique that I've used for years. I've taught uh, teens, adults. I was teaching, I was one time I was teaching at a college and they had a uh, parents day and they said, can you do a presentation for the parents? Um, Can you have them for an hour? Can you do a presentation? I said, how many do I have? Will I have computers for everybody? Heck, I'll teach them to animate. Let's go. And so, and it was kind of just doing that. And 
I would dare argue it's kind of an exercise in my own vanity to see if I can pull it off. <laughs> so, it's, but it's still kind of fun. Well, and just hearing the way you describe it, I'm not even in the class, and hearing you start the whole, let's go to file, let's go to preferences. Like, <laughs> I did have that feeling that I had, you know, in, you know, like my math class when we were trying to learn the difference for between like sine and cosine, where I was just like, right. yes. <laughs> Um, and, uh, but yeah, no, yeah, it's like a very comforting way of doing it. I almost feel like it's like a, a parent being like, this isn't a big deal to a kid. Like when they get like a, like a scratch or something and the kid's like, right. oh, it's not a big deal. If you're saying, right. okay, let's just pick dots. Like I can, <laughs> I can pick dots. Yeah. Definitely. I think, um, and that and the, and the, uh, the other problem is, and I've seen this, I, I kind of, and again, I'm trying not to sound arrogant with respect to other teachers, oh, okay. but <laughs> but what I've noticed, and this is honestly, like I said, I, I, didn't, I didn't have the best teachers. What I found a lot of times is the programs that I teach, they're incredible. I mean, they, they've they literally been used in motion pictures. I mean, Toon Boom Harmony was the last 2D animation that Disney put out in theaters, uh, The Princess and the Frog. It used to it used um, Toon Boom Harmony for that. So the software that I teach is the same software, but it's way beyond what was used for that movie. Um, and again, it's also used for a lot of stuff that's on TV. So it, being, it can be quite intimidating. If I showed up and said, "Hey, here's the rig, or here here's Bart Simpson in this area," it might look cool. But I trust me when I tell you, it's going to scare you because of how, like how complicated it is. Yeah. But if I come in and go, yeah, we're doing this little stick dude here. Um, and the only thing I'm going to do is, let's say, I'll start in with, uh, what's that, a keyframe here. Keyframe basically being a start at the end of something. If I drop some keyframes on the end here. And this is basically, I'm selecting the eyes, nose, and mouth. So I can literally grab these guys and go, what if I put this over here? All right, so that's not bad. Mm -hmm. um, but let's add one little extra thing. Let's go to the circle here, the little head. And if I drop in a starting keyframe, like where I want this to begin, and at the end, I'm gonna rotate this little guy a little bit, maybe even distort it. So what we have now is that. Just little simple things like that, um, which come to think of it, I think I want to change his nose, but that's another thing. Um, but yeah, just getting people to do that. It's like, yeah, so I can show you the fancy stuff later, but getting it to work mm -hmm. and just getting you to have fun before you even start worrying about all the technical stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's better. But yeah, it's um, just getting people to relax and not worry about, oh, is this going to work right? Or wait, what does that button do? What does that button do? What does that button do? Eh, we'll get to that later. Yeah, well, I, I think you're you're definitely right about being overwhelmed by all the buttons. <laughs> and you know, the idea of learning by just doing, just saying, okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. I think that's that's really useful. I mean, just, you know, I'm not a teacher and I'm also not especially great with computers, let alone animation. <laughs> um, but, you know, I just know from like teaching my mom how to use a smartphone and, you know, my mom's brilliant, but she really had never really used one. Teaching her how to do stuff that was just explaining to her, you know, there's no mistake you can really make on this. Just keep, keep going. You can undo it. It's not a big deal. Um, <laughs> But it took it took a while, um, and I find myself running into stuff where I'm just like, I don't get how to do this. Like, uh, you know, like apps like Snapchat. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't get it. Well, it's the funny thing is, it's like it's you literally have to kind of go baby steps with everything, and um, you can't freak out. Um, did I put that on the wrong layer? Let me think. Yep, you did. Where did that go? There we are. Those don't belong on that layer. Cut. Thank you. Um, don't mind me. Just talking to myself here. I like it. 
Uh, but yeah, this is like you you have to do baby steps with things, and it's like it, it's literally it's called baby steps for a reason. You weren't you. I mean, you didn't just like like you weren't born walking. It's like you have to kind of like like um, pull yourself up on things, and then you're gonna fall a couple of times. Um, you didn't instantly know how to tie your shoes, and it's like, but we have somehow forgot that we went through all of that. Right. Uh, so it's kind of one of those things of. People are like, oh, how, how am I going to make this feature film? I didn't ask you to make a feature film. I asked you to animate a dot. That's mm -hmm. all we're doing. And it's like, can we, can we, uh, I literally was teaching some students recently and they were saying, um, they wanted me to show them how to animate a tentacle. Okay, cool. So I showed them how to animate a tentacle. Did we start with ten, like drawing little suckers on it? Nope. We made a simple little triangle, a long, thin red triangle. And then we animated it so it was like curving and bending. And they're like, oh, cool. I said, cool. Now we're going to go back and add the artwork to it. So just adding, bake the cake first, frost it later. Because if there are eggshells in your batter, no one cares what frosting it is. <laughs> so it's like, you're doing these really simple things first. Um, don't worry about the complicated stuff. Like if you notice, um, I did my animation and made, moved those eyes, or moved the eyes, nose, and mouth over. I'm now playing around with this because I can come back in and do a second pass and go, hmm, let me duplicate this last drawing here. Let's get the eyeballs out. I'm doing a simple little cheat here. This is an animation technique called squash and stretch. Think about it like a beach ball. If you squish that down, then it should also kind of go off on the sides there. So I'm doing a very ugly three frame blink. So Mr. Ball goes down. He also goes out on the sides. And they're going to bring you guys little eyelids down, not lids, brows, one of those. One of those things. Okay. Okay, so if I scrub this, that's not bad. Cool, go back to Mr. Camera View. All right, so, and about here, we'll have him open his eyes up again, go two frames later, open again. Okay, so if I play this, not terrible. Very nice. So yeah, it's that whole thing of, um, and the sad thing is, what I kick myself on is I've seen commercials recently because because of the pandemic, a lot of things that people wanted to shoot live action um, have been 2D or like animated, animated like commercials. And so I've seen some recently where I saw the artwork looking a little bit lower than this level and it really i was angry because i'm like darn i could have done that <laughs> so it's like um but yeah it's just kind of it doesn't need to be if you're just learning this and i think a lot of people try to do this most perfect i don't know disney style thing and it's like nope you're just learning um we'll do the other thing later it's i don't know the first time you tried to the first time you tried to write an email and tried to make yourself sound, I don't know, normal. <laughs> or like, hmm, is this the right tone that I'm giving? And each time you, you just get better with that, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's the main thing that's happened with that, with them. So who are, you know, the kind of people you would encourage to take an animation class? Anyone who, whether it's they're curious about it or if they've said, I've always drawn this little guy and I would love to see if I could animate him. Or if you're thinking, I, I see some of the behind the scenes and I think that'd be kind of cool. Like I want to, I want to learn how to do that. Um, and I think that's the main thing. It's cause there, there's a lot of curiosity in it. And what I love about, uh, cause I teach a lot of times I'll teach like a foundation or teach people just beginning. Um, it's so they can actually get a get a taste of what's there, get your feet wet. The other thing is sometimes I've actually had the privilege of teaching people who were traditional animators working with pencil and paper, and now they're coming to the digital side, and I have to go, oh, here's how, here's what's different, um, and here's how to change things around. And 
the last type of person that I was teaching, um, last night I was teaching a teacher, and, I, and that's one of the jobs that I do, that I'm contracted with Toon Boom to do, is train teachers, like high school teachers, how to teach this to their students. And finding ways, one, uh, figuring out a way that it could, they can understand it, and then at the same time, making sure that they have a way that they can teach the students. That's really cool. And I guess, you know, I hadn't even thought of teachers needing to learn how to do this with digital, you know, digital arts teachers, right. computer teachers. That's, that's really cool. Well, do you, uh, do you do this in like your spare time as a hobby or an animator or anything? Yes. Um, actually, I, I do train, like I said, I train and teach people, but I have my own little personal projects. I'm going to, this is what I, this is what I mean by I, I'm a hack. I will jump from program to program, depending on what I'm doing, but I'll pull up, a will pull up one of my little personal projects that I'm working on. Um, this is a character. Actually, he was built out. Now you saw how simple the other, uh, the little face was done. This is also done in that same program. Um, and this is my alter ego, Barry Angry. He is a bitter strawberry with no filter. And I wanted him to be, it's very stylized. It's kind of 1930s, 1940s cartoon, but also mixed with current kawaii type of um, doodles. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's, I'm, he's in development currently. Uh, it's not a kid's cartoon because, again, he's just, He's not a happy camper. Um, so it's kind of, Barry gets to say all the things that I'd like to say. <laughs> so it's like when someone really makes him angry. I love this. I mean, no one loves a bad attitude more than me. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, a, and it's the whole idea of pushing. What I like about this, and, and it, um, it's not just the character, but developing this and then going, hmm, is this domain name available? So I literally purchased BarryAngry.com, even though I I think I purchased that several years ago, but it's been slow in development. But it's like, okay, we have that and we also have, we also make sure we grab things like the Instagram names and all that stuff like that, but just kind of having that whole digital presence for our brand that eventually people if you want to write Barry an email I'm like he, you're not going to like what he writes back but yeah you can <laughs> so it's like little fun stuff like that I love that so and yeah I mean just looking at this and, and there's a shadow behind him so that must be a whole other can of worms right well th that's the the funny thing um honestly this is in this is in photoshop so for instance uh one of the things i'm teaching i teach people is like oh how do you get stuff uh ready for uh mm -hmm. social media so actually if i turn this off that's just an effect in photoshop it's like the drop shadow effect that i have turned on so i can actually let me see if i can double click and bring that up in a second um but yeah, I just, uh, this is, yes, here we go. So literally there is a drop shadow layer. Um, and here's a funny thing. This is my, this is my, my art degree at work. The color that I'm using actually isn't black because Barry's red and mm -hmm. if red is going to cast a shadow. It's technically going to be its complement, So it would be green. So it's a very dark green that I'm using for the shadow. Um, Ooh. Yeah, little fun things. <laughs> There's little little things that no one you you don't know why it works, but it does. Like you wouldn't yeah. have known that had I told you. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah, I would never have known. Um, and then even like I said, he's on his own layer here. So this was exported as like a what's called a PNG from mm -hmm. Toon Boom Harmony. Brought it over to Photoshop, and then I have uh, this little. I love working on legal pads. Like normally when I'm writing out classes, I'm not on the computer. I write them out pencil, mm -hmm. like my number, my number two pencil. I need to actually buy new legal pads now, but that's there. And then here's Barry. And of course I can turn on and off the shadow that's there. Um, so one of the things that we can do is you would make little memes of Barry saying something funny. It's like, um, what is it? Um, 
Oh, it's not. And it's, he'll, his, Barry has a very raspy voice. He says something like, it's not fair that you get to walk around here being stupid and I can't smack you in the face with a brick, not even once. So it's like, um, yeah, it's my, my, it's kind of, kind of Harvey Farstein. But... I like it. I like Barry. I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, I have a little downtime. So whenever I do have downtime, I start working more on Barry and, and getting him to come about. It's like, it's, it's kind of that fun thing of, am I working this week? Okay. Or am I working on my stuff this week? So, mm-hmm. so does Barry come out when you're like in traffic? Um, not as, not, not as much uh, to be totally honest. I think Barry, cause Barry comes out a lot. I would honestly have to say it's, it's almost a social media thing. So it's like, you'll, you'll see someone say something or it's like, Oh my gosh, that is so stupid. I can't believe they said that. Um, or what, what is it? Um, uh, someone had wrote something so I just, whenever it, it happens, instead of me retali- retaliating on Facebook, I just go to my Google Doc, and I literally have a Google Doc of Barryisms. And so um, one of them, stop with the stupid, you've mastered it already. Um, and so just kind of, like, I just kind of go there. And the odd thing is, if I'm if I'm in a happy place, it's very hard to write for him. <laughs> so it's kind of, he, he has his purpose. I love this. Is this something you can do in your class? Do you think they can make their alter egos? I think that would be kind of cool. I know with I know what we did with um, when I was doing the the last animation class. I had to I was teaching them how to make their own little animated self portraits. So it was kind of kind of based off of the um, the little doodle. Ah, I have multiple programs open. Um, where did that go? There we are. Um, based off of the little this little doodle thing, it's like okay, go ahead and make your own. Um, self-portrait this way and make it do all these cool things. But yeah. And I guess I'm, I'm curious, like, what are what are sort of steps people can take outside of classes to do animation? Like, are there affordable programs they can download or any resources that would be good? Oh, good grief! Yes, there are. Okay, here's the here's the thing that a lot of people don't get. There are programs. Um, for instance, there was a 3D program. I don't know 3D, but there's a 3D program called Blender, mm-hmm. um, and you can Google it. Blender 3D. Blender is absolutely 100% free. It's called open source, so it's not just oh. That's it's trying to be a computer program. No, Blender is incredible with what it can do, and they keep making it better and better every year. I mean, there's, there's, um, oh wow, there's an actual series on Netflix, or there's a movie that was on Netflix that was actually done with Blender, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, also, in 2D animation, there's something called Open Tunes, like Open and then T O O N Z. That's also free um, on Netflix. At least I think it's still there. It's called Mary and the Witch's Flower. It's an anime, and they made sure that they um, went in and used only open tunes for this. So it's like almost this big infomercial advertising the software. So that's on that level. There are video programs like DaVinci Resolve free. Uh, Fusion, also free, which is like doing uh, visual effects. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, with programs like Harmony, the stuff that I teach, Harmony has several different levels. Like if you notice, I had pulled up, um, I had two different versions or two different windows open. There's Harmony Essentials, which is the basic. Then there's Harmony Advanced. And then there's Harmony Premium, which is used in professional uh, cartoons and things like that that you see uh, on TV. Now, that being said, I think what Toonbin did this a few years back, they made it so you can say, oh, you can just pay monthly. And if you say, I don't want to pay it monthly, it's like, okay, cool, you can pay annually. Well, I don't want to pay annually. Can you pay out one price? Yes, you can. So they gave you three different options with that. Um, And on top of that, one of the things that I tried to develop is like, um, I'm even working on what's called a a 21-day boot camp because uh, Toonbin has 
these a 21 day trial, which is a weird number for a trial, but it's like, okay. So I figured out, let's do a 21 day boot camp. So it's basically 21 project based lessons that if you just started in the program, you're like, oh, oh, by by day 21, I learned how to do blah. And by day 21, you'll be thinking, yes, I really want to go ahead and get the software or wow, I'm glad I didn't buy the software. One or the, one way or the other, you kind of get your, your feet wet into it. Yeah. That's, oh, that's really cool. And, oh, and um, so for anyone that doesn't know, and you're, you know, you're wanting to see what these classes feel like, get more of a taste, you're having a sort of uh, teaser for your class. Is that next Saturday? I believe it is. I think it's the, is it the 24th, I think, or I think mm-hmm. it's, yes. Uh, from 2 to 3.30. And uh I'm going to do kind of what I did today, but a little more in depth uh, because I'm I'm just kind of like working and just kind of doing my normal speed thing. But I'll be a little more in depth showing off things uh, and how, because I think it's it's kind of cool to go, yeah, for instance, if I say one of the classes talks about selling digital products. You're like, what do you mean? Like an MP3? I was like, well, yeah, an MP3, an, an ebook. Maybe you have different, uh, what are people using now? Like bullet journals. And maybe you have different things that people can, can download and print out. Um, and the amount of things that you can do today versus, let's say, even five or 10 years ago, it's incredible. And especially in today and challenges like today where people are thinking like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Okay, here's several options that you could do. Um, and like, for instance, I I love things like digital products because you don't have to pay about storage or like, I have 50, I have I have 500 t-shirts in my room. They're not going anywhere. And so it's like, instead of that, it's like, nope, it's just sit, sitting on storage and Amazon's uh one of their computer drives and I'm paying five cents a month or something crazy like that. It's literally about that cheap, oh, but, um, but yeah, this little stuff like that, just kind of letting people know this is what's possible because I think a lot of times people still think like it's several years ago. Like I had someone recently say, Oh, um, uh, I'll send you this. I'll, I'll burn a DVD and send it to I send this to you. I said, you know, you could just send me the movie file Just send me an MP4. And it's like people are still thinking like there's all these new opportunities for people to do things. Um, even like, what is that? The uh, printing, a di- uh, doing a digital cookbook. Instead of you trying to figure out how to print that out, what if you could put together a cookbook? I mean, take some video with your phone of you making that one recipe. Like maybe you can like, I wish I had video footage of my grandmother making her biscuits or something like that. <laughs> so I was like, and then go in and just drop through video in there with that and the actual ingredients and you can have links to go, oh, by the way, this store carries blah. Little things like that that people don't think of and it's what I want to do is just kind of go, this is what's possible. You don't have to do it, but letting you know these are possibilities that are out there. I love that. And I had never even thought of the idea of a digital cookbook. That is so cool. And that's something that especially, I, I feel like things like this would be so nice to learn how to do, especially in sort of era of COVID when we can get together as much or, you know, touching or close contact, isn't that great? I right. mean, I would love to, you know, send a digital cookbook to like my aunt or my cousin or something. That'd be so fun. Ah, there's a hole there somewhere. Quit that out. There we go. Thank you. There's still a hole. Stop that. Yeah, it's, it's funny you're saying like um, where people freak out about technology. I remember taking a sculpture class in college and I was in wood, I was taking woodworking and I was using the bandsaw and mm-hmm. I was cutting something and the blade popped so it broke. It didn't hurt me or anything. It just made this very loud noise and the blades like just kind of ripped out and so. And I left from that class and withdrew. I said, it's a very simple thing. Um, if I mess up on the computer, I'm not going to lose a finger. I'm good. <laughs> so it's like, so that's the way I look at things. Oh, I love this. 
Yeah, it's like, this is that whole thing. If you notice that I didn't do anything, I didn't add any color first. I'm just kind of playing around with this. Um, but yeah, just kind of just having a ball with this and not, not taking it too serious because, hey, you can always undo this. Um, and the idea of, like with animation, it's that whole illusion of life. Um, I think I'll leave that blue. Seriously? What are you using, and why are you going that slow? Ah, turn that off. That's what's going on. Stabilizer off. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. But, yeah, just having just having fun and getting that childlike wonder back um, when you're not worried about, well, what if this looks wrong? What if I fail? What if this messes up? What if this messes up? Eh, just have fun. I love that. I love that attitude. And and yeah, that's where you really have fun. Um, I mean, for sure, there is definitely something to be said for working towards something and enjoying accomplishments, but what about fun? <laughs> but, all right, you guys, that is all the time we have today. Um, again, if you'd like to get a sneak peek and more of an in-depth look at uh, Tony's class between next Saturday, uh, we'll We'll put some links up so everyone can uh, check it out. Uh, anything you want to say before we go? Um, I want to say this, and it's the thing that we've been I've been I've been talking with other colleagues about lately, um, and it's going to sound related but not related. Just whatever you're trying to do, definitely try to do it, and don't fear failure. Unfortunately, our society constantly teaches you like with grades and all these things like, well, what if I fail? You're supposed to fail. That way you know what works and what doesn't work. So you just have to keep trying new things. And it's something that I'm learning late in life. So <laughs> I'm trying to share that with as many people as possible. Like, hey, yeah, try it. What's the worst going to happen? Try it again. Try again. Try again. That's you, all. <laughs> you won't lose a finger. <laughs> you won't lose a finger. Yes. Unless you're trying to do the whole woodworking thing. But even then, they've got safeguards now. So you, cool. you, have, you have nine other fingers. So. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. This is so fun. This is so, this is so something I, I don't know anything about. <laughs> cool. I am. Look great. I'm really grateful. And I had fun, had fun chatting with you and sharing with you some of my chaos. <laughs> I'm definitely be watching your class next Saturday. Awesome. All right. Bye, Facebook. Bye.